Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, the death toll in the Bahamas expected to climb as the extent of Dorian's impact becomes more apparent. Cable and Wireless Charitable Foundation earmarks half a million US for post-hurricane relief and restoration in the Bahamas. And taxi operators skeptical about concessions offered in the 2019-2020 national budget. The details coming up. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. Football, football, football. The new season of the CONCACAF Nation League begins in September and Suriname is coming to Dominica. Yes, you heard right. Dominica takes on Suriname in their first match of the 2019 CONCACAF Nation League. Thursday, 5th September at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium at 3 p.m. Come on, come on. From east, west, north, south. Come support the nature boy. Bring your flags, your rags, and shout. Let's go, DA. Let's go. It's at the CONCACAF Nation League. Dominica versus Suriname, Thursday, September 5th, 3 p.m. Adults, $20. Children under 12, $10. We are calling on the public and the private sector to please give your staff who want to attend the game an early hour to go support the Nature Boys. Let's go, DA. Thursday, September 5th, Winter Park Sports Stadium, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. 767. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. We begin in the Bahamas. Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Dr. Hubert Minnis, has confirmed that the number of deaths from Hurricane Dorian has risen to seven. The destructive Category 5 storm has ravaged the islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama. The Prime Minister has told Bahamians that they can expect more deaths. The Prime Minister has called for compassion in dealing with families and who lost relatives. He has also discouraged sharing photos or video recordings of those who lost their lives in the storm. According to Eyewitness News in the Bahamas, at its peaks, Dorian lashed the Abacos with 185 mile per hour winds. Families have been desperate to hear from loved ones in both islands. In some cases, contact has been lost with relatives since Friday afternoon. Eyewitness News says while relatives remain hopeful of making contact, anxiety levels remain high, with many saying they did not know whether their families were safe or what conditions they were facing. Numerous communities have been severely flooded. Minis said it was the government's urgent task to provide food, water, shelter, safety and security to those impacted, vulnerable and displaced. A 600-foot ship of the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, stocked with food and supplies, was expected to arrive at the, uh, in the Abacos. The United States Coast Guard was assisting the Royal Bahamas Police Force and Royal Bahama Defense Force with search and rescue efforts and transporting the injured and critically ill off the island.
The Prime Minister called the aftermath of Dorian one of the greatest national crises in his country's history. He said every resource will be brought to bear to bring relief to the thousands impacted. The search and rescue efforts on both islands continued on Wednesday. In other news now, Cable and Wireless uh, Communications, uh, a Liberty Latin America company through its Cable and Wireless Charitable Foundation announced uh, or has earmarked 500,000 US dollars towards immediate and long-term relief and restoration efforts in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. The foundation has also put out an appeal to help raise additional funds to support the recovery efforts given the significant damage reported on the islands. Cable and Wireless Communication CEO Inga Smits has expressed sympathies to the government and people of the Bahamas who have been directly and indirectly affected by this natural disaster. Smits, who is the chair of the foundation, is appealing to the public to join the efforts by supporting a fundraising campaign. She is urging customers, employees and business partners to help support the people of the Bahamas in this very challenging time. Donations will go towards the immediate relief effort and long-term rebuilding programs. Regarding the impact of the hurricane on Cable and Wireless's operations, Smith said we are following up with our teams in Abaco and Grand Bahama to ensure their safety as well as the safety of everyone on the islands. There are island-wide power outages on both islands, and as such, communications are slow to come in. Giving an update on the company's preparations for to provide support, Smith shared and I quote, we already have a team in place supported by our parent company, Liberty Latin America, who has been mobilizing efforts to provide relief to Abaco and Grand Bahama. She says immediately following the all clear members of our team will fly to Abaco and Grand Bahama to personally check on our team members in those islands, provide care packages, conduct assessments and determine what further assistance is required. She urged everyone in the path of the hurricane to stay safe, keep in touch with friends, family and neighbours. Smith ended by saying our teams are working around the clock to restore services as quickly as possible as we know how important it is for families and friends to connect with each other, especially during these trying times. Together we will recover and rebuild. We stand with the people and government of the Bahamas. The chairman of CARICOM, Alan Chastney, has issued a statement following the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, where seven people have been killed. The statement reads, today the hearts of the people of the Caribbean are heavy. Once again, one of our Caribbean community member states has been devastated by a dangerous hurricane as our region continues to experience the effects of climate change. Shastney said, I'm saddened by the early reports coming out of the Bahamas which are reminiscent of the severe devastation experienced by a number of CARICOM states just two years ago when hurricanes Irma and Maria hit us. On behalf of the community, I extend deepest condolences to all who have lost loved ones to this devastating storm. He added, the Caribbean community expresses its full solidarity with the government and people of the Bahamas at this time and stands ready to give whatever assistance is required to deal with the effects of this tragedy. At the last CARICOM summit held in St. Lucia in July this year, heads of government considered options for financing member states' actions to build resilience to the effects of climate change, including the establishment of a resilience foundation. Shastney says it is his fervent hope that this matter will be given new impetus in the coming months. He said immediately the emphasis must be on assisting our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas in getting back on their feet in the quickest possible time. Meantime, the CARICOM chairman and prime minister of St. Lucia has been uh, speaking to reporters in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian's impact on the Bahamas. Some of Mr. Shastney's comments to St. Lucia's DBS TV could easily be applied to other countries in the region. We saw the unpredictability of the storm, where it was at 14 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden it dropped to 1 and 2 miles an hour, which is very similar to what happened to us with Hurricane Tomas. And then when we look at what Maria did to Dominica, which had started off as a hurricane, category one hurricane, and within seven hours became a category five. We as a country must be in a constant state of preparedness. There's no exceptions for that. And certainly that state of, 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 of readiness must be heightened at the beginning of the season until the end of the season. I feel that with uh, our own Nemo, that we need to up the game. I'm not so sure that the local governments are involved to the extent that they should. So are we identifying the homes where people should be forcibly evacuated? 
homes that um, are not strong enough to withstand, homes that are in floodplains and in, in causing those people to be able to go to shelters. But you can't ask people to go to shelters if the shelters themselves are not in a state of readiness. With regards to the vagrants that we had, um, we need to do a better job. You know, um, my understanding is that some of them had gone into shelters, but once they were fed, they left. So I think that we're going to have to put um, necessary processes in place to ensure that once they go into the shelter, that they'll remain in the shelter until the all clear is given. Right here at home, the Red Cross is appealing to Dominicans to help in the relief effort for the Bahamas. Earlier this week, Hurricane Dorian settled over the northern Bahamian islands, causing destruction and death in those territories. Several countries have come on board to lend support to the recovery of the Bahamas, Dominica included. On Monday, government pledged 100,000 US dollars to help the Dorian ravaged islands. Assistance will also be coming from the utility companies and essential services sector. Director General of the Dominica Red Cross, Sandra Charter Rule, is encouraging Dominicans to donate cash for recovery in the first instance. The Dominica Red Cross Society is soliciting financial contributions from the Dominican public as part of its efforts to provide much needed assistance to the Bahamas. The Red Cross office has been in contact with the president of the Bahamian Red Cross to express solidarity with the people of the Bahamas and to offer support to those severely affected by this unrelenting historic storm. It is certainly disheartening to watch the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian and the suffering of the Bahamian people. As we know, it was just two years ago, our island was battered by Hurricane Maria, placing us in an all too familiar situation. And we were grateful for the assistance from our sister national societies. We now have to do all within our power to assist the Bahamian people. The Dominica Red Cross Society has created a disaster relief account at CIBC First Caribbean Bank on Old Street in Roseau. Cash donations can also be brought to the headquarters of Red Cross on Federation Drive in Goodwill. The Red Cross has taken a decision to solicit funds from the public to assist Bahamas. Potential donors can make cash donations to the Bahamas Red Cross Relief Operation at the Dominica Red Cross Disaster Relief Account number 4123448 at the First Caribbean International Bank or at the Society's National Headquarters on Federation Drive in Goodwill. The Dominica Red Cross is in dialogue with the Bahamian Red Cross to determine their needs and will continue to keep the public informed on other ways by which the country can assist. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. Football, football, football. The new season of the CONCACAF Nation League begins in September and Suriname is coming to Dominica. Yes, you heard right. Dominica takes on Suriname in their first match of the 2019 CONCACAF Nation League. Thursday, 5th September at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium at 3 p.m. Come on, come on. From east, west, north, south. Come support the nature boy. Bring your flags, your rags, and shout. Let's go, DA. Let's go. It's at the CONCACAF Nation League. Dominica versus Suriname, Thursday, September 5th, 3 p.m. Adults, $20. Children under 12, $10. We are calling on the public and the private sector to please give your staff who want to attend the game an early hour to go support the Nature Boys. The nature Let's go, go. DA. Thursday, September 5th, Windsor Park Sports Stadium, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Les moun ki ni tibi estene e ben tou se, moun ki an bon sante oli wain ka wespiwe se vemin la. Moun ki pani bon tepe waman kon sa ki ni maladi HIV, akohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sensi pou se maladi sa la. Moun ki ka tou se ni pou pran proposyon le yo an pami moun an plas publik. Kouve bouchou le o ka estene e tou se. Visite dokter e ben plas sante yo. 
finit tout traitement yo ba ou pour sa joindre guérison et puis maladie TB. En responsabilité ou aider tout bout si même maladie TB et HIV, protéger corps et les autres. you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Taxi operators in Dominica are skeptical about concessions offered them in the 2019-2020 national budget. Here is Andrea Louis with a report. During his budget presentation in August, Prime Minister Scariot announced a concession on vehicles for taxi operators to improve their service in the tourism industry. However, Chairman of the Combined Taxi Association, Inc., Philip Aguist, while applauding this move by government, says it will be difficult for taxi operators to take advantage of these concessions due to a very specific requirement therein. The provisions made for, for taxi drivers or the concessions for taxi drivers on um, 20 seater vehicles, um, it reached mid one step. I think it needs to make another step. Um, the concessions we are happy with, but the age of the vehicles, five years, um, I think is very, still very steep for a taxi driver. Um, we believe that we, we made a, a, a request for it to be 10 years, a 10-year-old ten, a vehicle, on 10 years and under. And um, I don't think it was accepted all told because apparently they are five years and under. That makes it very costly for the taxi driver to be able to purchase a bus five years and under. So we have spoken to, to, to the persons responsible, so we hope they are considering to have it um, 10 years, um, for at least two years. Due to the cost of such vehicles, the amount of money needed to finance their purchase and maintenance can be daunting. A 10-year-old coast, coaster, 20-seater, ranges to about $135,000 with the concessions. Um, so it means a five-year-old coach would be pretty close to $200,000 with the concessions. Um, the concessions really help you very well because not only the duty, you get order and the excise and whatever, which, which brings the vehicle um, price much better. But if you invest $200,000 into a vehicle that you only have the work for six months, the installment per month is going to be a mountain. Um, what guarantee do you have you have good prices to be able to meet that installments monthly so I see it a challenge for some persons who would like to invest into big buses um, but I don't think they can muster it consultations have been held with relevant authorities on the concerns of the taxi operators however Geist is of the view that more direct discussions should be held with those involved in the industry we had several consultations um, but we we like how to say it we we carry messages to and persons carry messages for us we don't carry messages ourselves um, so we have areas where we go and carry the messages and then messages are then carried across to the authorities that i have a problem with i think um we are adults we should be able to carry our messages ourselves and be able to explain ourselves why we need a a, a, a 10 year old vehicle and under and i believe but if somebody explains it for you, the person doesn't have the interest actually in it. So it means the person would explain it in the person's way. And um, hence the taxi driver's plight will not be able to be addressed. And Dominica's recently launched WIMAC chapter has been praised for its leadership role from the regional head. We go again to Andrea Louis for more. Women in Maritime Association Caribbean, WIMAC, Dominica branch, was officially launched late last month. WIMAC was formed under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, to tackle the underrepresentation of women in the maritime industry. 
During an interview with Channel 5 News, National Liaison Officer for Wimaka Dominica Chapter, Beth Yudazil, said the local branch has already come under high commendation from the regional body. As a matter of fact, I must say though that when we started the chapter and we got our certificate of incorporation, um, we told the WIMAC governing body about it and they asked me to put a document together so I could send to the other countries as to the steps taken to form our chapter. So you find Dominica is really spearheading the chapters because I think probably what, maybe Jamaica and maybe two other countries have chapters. Dominica is really piloting that. But we are a chapter of the WIMAC itself. So we follow the same mission statement, the same um, mentoring programs, networking, and that kind of thing. The difference is that our women are enthusiastic. We are on the ball or we go. And I think the government comes is very pleased. There were several difficulties in creating the local chapter, including the passage of Tropical Storm Erica and Hurricane Maria, and the limited interest among some women in the maritime industry. Azil's hope, though, is to have young people develop a greater interest in the maritime industry and have a greater awareness of the opportunities available to them. My vision for the Dominica chapter is that the schools are targeted because, um, most, because the shipping and maritime industry was a male-dominated sector. Some people think that women are not suited, but right now we have women captains, women doing everything a man would do in shipping. And so we need to sensitize our youth about that. Again, you find most young people when they come from school, they want to be a doctor, a lawyer, and probably that is saturated. And there are opportunities in the maritime industry. Meantime, President of the WIMAC Dominica Chapter, Tamara Lowe, looks forward to bringing effective representation and developments to the local maritime industry with the launching of WIMAC. In Dominica right now, we are looking to have women more interested in terms of um, be interested in shipping, be interested in taking up roles in the port, um, even in the cruise, cruise ship industry and um, yachting. One of our speakers at the WIMAC launching was Mr. Bino Abadwell, and he spoke specifically of how proud he was of our contribution thus far. And he also mentioned several women that were in several different areas in the maritime industry and how they were pushing for more um, via training. So we're sending a lot of um, women out to train um, to be better at the fields that they are presently involved in. Dominica is the fourth among 15 Caribbean countries to set up a branch of WIMAC. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. 
Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. And to end the news, a look again at the headlines. The death toll in the Bahamas expected to climb as the extent of Dorian's impact becomes more apparent. Cable and Wireless Charitable Foundation earmarks half a million U.S. for post-hurricane relief and restoration in the Bahamas and taxi operators skeptical about concessions offered in the 2019-2020 national budget. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.